What's up, you guys? It's Warren with Scale Audio, and today we're going to talk about transients. So, transients are generally people who only stay in one place for a short period of time. I'm just kidding. That's not the kind of transients we're talking about. Where's my slidey thing? Today, we're going to learn how to push things farther back in a mix, bring them more forward, make them snappier, make them fuller, and more. So, for the sake of hospitality, my like button is your like button, so press it and subscribe. Let's get to it. The definition of a transient is a momentary change in voltage, current, or frequency, and the adjective of a transient is only lasting for a short period of time or impermanent. So if we take a look at this kick, where on this kick right here is the transient? If you said right at the beginning here, you're right. I change this length down, the transient is going to be this initial snap, or this right here. And so to change these transients, we have tools like transient shapers. So if we look here, we've got my kick, and we have an attack knob and a sustain knob. An attack knob is going to turn up that peak. You can see it happening here. Make it more snappy. Turning it down takes it away. Sustain is going to affect anything after that. Take it away. And so we're going to take this one knob at a time. Our attack, which is that initial transient of the sound, when turned up, will bring something more forward in a mix. And when, tur when turned down, will bring something farther back. So if we play this mix and this track, You notice when I turned it up, it came out front of the mix more. So let's fast forward this to a location where I can just play it and play the sound. Okay, normal. Okay, snappier, turned up attack. And then if we turn it down, it'll bring it farther back. Now, if we look at the sustain, turning the stain up creates a, far, a stronger after effect, which I actually originally did in this mix. I turned this up to about 22. So let's listen to it turned down and turned up to 22. Turn down. Might be a little hard to hear, so let's exaggerate it. And because this is a very short kick, you really aren't got hearing a huge difference um, because it just it ends so fast before you even really recognize that the end part was turned up. Uh, if we solo the kick by itself, you'll be able to hear the difference better. A little bit more sustain there. Now, if we turned it down, it starts feeling empty. It doesn't feel as full. Versus. And to make it more obvious, instead of going from 100 
to zero, we'll go from 100 to 100. So all the way down to all the way up. And we'll do this with a solo. Right? And on things that have longer sustains of the sound, turning this up is going to make it fuller. So this will do things like bring out drum tones in full uh, drum loops or, you know, you got toms, things like that. If you turn it down, you'll take that tonality away. This is a great tool that is uh, especially great for getting the snappiness and the fullness of your drums. Something else you notice that some of these have is a limit clip and off. Uh, generally, they just have a limiter on them, which is gonna keep you from clipping when pushing these transients. So if we watch this kick, let's unsolo it because I like the song. If we watch this kick, we are way above clipping. And so we can choose a limiter, in which case you'll see it here. Or this clip option will actually square off the top and it'll distort or saturate the transient itself, uh, which will change the character of the sound. So if we listen, we'll do that versus the limit. And as you can see, we get a little bit different tone and feeling in that initial transient. Now, when turned off, this will let it go above zero decibels, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to clip. That kind of depends on the following plugins and how those are programmed. For the most part, I believe that's true for transient shapers. Uh, however, any VST or any program can operate however they want. So they don't want to let through anything above zero dB, that's not going to go through above zero dB. It's going to clip. One thing when using transients that you want to keep in mind is compression, because if you have a slow attack and you have a sharp transient, that transient's going to get through, which is just fine. But if you have a longer release, your compressor can only, it might just only really touch that transient and it might move that uh, VU meter or that that threshold might activate the compression. And if your release is long, even if the rest of the sound is underneath of that transient that triggered the compressor, you're, you're going to start getting compression on these items. Um, and so therefore you might start hearing compression without the compression actually hitting the things that you want it to hit. If you have sharp transients or loud transients, and you're making a fast attack, that transient is what you're cutting down on. Uh, doing multiple routes of compression can actually be great for things like vocals because our T's, P's, and things like that are going to end up being transients. That's their, their transients for the words, the puck. I was just say pat. P, A, and T, they're all gonna be different. The P and T are gonna be a lot sharper. Uh, when you're leveling out a human's vocals, uh, and you're trying to get things even, it can sometimes be great to come through with a sharp attack and then come through with a slower attack. That way you start cutting down the transients and even, evening out the sound. And then you start letting some of those transients back in because I go pat. And when I say the P, the compressor doesn't activate yet. And now all of a sudden the compressor is activating on the rest of the word and leaving the P alone, creating better enunciation, uh, things like that. Another thing to keep in, keep in mind is things like optical compressors because they're going to have latency. So if you have a really strong transient and you're using an opto compressor, expect a really strong decrease in volume somewhere after that transient. So now you know. A transient is not a homeless person. It's a quick initial value or change or fluctuation in sound. Um, with music, we're always generally talking about that very beginning percussive part of a noise. 
And you can change the transient via this transient shaper or transient processor. The more you turn the attack up, the closer a sound is to you. The more you turn the attack down, the farther away it goes. The more you turn the sustain up, the more full the sound sounds. The more you turn the sustain down, the more thin it gets. Most transient processors are going to have the option to limit the sound rather than let it through too high or let it clip. Some actually have an intentional clipping option, which is going to change the character of the initial transient. And transients should always be considered when compressing. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please like the video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio and adios. Thank you.